Okay, so chapter two, section two, uh, introduces a couple more laws. So we're going to go back and revisit the law of the conservation of mass. Then we're going to introduce the law of definite proportions, the law of multiple proportions, and finally we're going to revisit Dalton's atomic theory and add a little bit of uh, beef to it. So first of all, the law of conservation of mass. In a chemical reaction, matter, matter is neither created nor destroyed. We got this from Antoine Lavoisier a couple sections ago. In a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So what happens in a chemical reaction? Let's, let's consider a, sort of a macro example. And let's, let's suppose that we're likening, you know, putting a car together to a chemical reaction. And if we do that, um, let's suppose that the chemical symbol for a car without wheels, this guy over here, is BD. All right, so there's BD. That's the chemical symbol for this guy. The chemical symbol for a wheel is, these guys are wheels right here, right? The chemical symbol for a wheel is WH. And the chemical symbol for a complete car is KR. Oops, went a little bit. So, <clears throat> How many objects exist before the reaction that's shown above? How many objects exist? So how many BDs are there? There's only one, right? I'm going to keep going back a second here. So how many BDs exist? One BD exists. Can you see it there? And how many wheels exist? Can you see the wheels right here? How many are there? Four. Okay. So what, what, what uh, sometimes students are tempted to do when they get to chemistry is they see, you know, this 1 plus 4, there must be 5 over here, right? Can you see how that's not right? See 1 plus 4, and that, what does that give us? How many cars do you see over here, complete cars? Only one. So what happens to the number? Um, how many objects exist before the, uh, sorry, I meant to go back down. How many objects exist before the reaction shown above? Can you see that there's five objects there? How many after? There's only one. What happens to the number in this reaction? It changes. Okay, can you see that? All right, but what happens to the mass? All right, so now in the second, uh, second question we're going to ask is, suppose each wheel weighs 80 pounds. All right, so if we're dealing with, let me go back to the pen here. If we're dealing, I'm going to put the mass below here, okay? We had number. We were putting numbers in this line. But let's put the mass down here. If we, uh, suppose each wheel weighs 80 pounds and each wheel is car weighs 1,200. How many pounds of BD do we have right here? Okay, you should be, you should be answering that question uh, on a piece of paper in front of you. I'm going to go ahead and write it out. It's 1,200 pounds, right? We'll do these massive pounds. All right, now suppose each wheel weighs 80 pounds. How many pounds of wheels do we have? Well, there's 80, 160, 240, 320. I guess we knew that. It was 4 times 80, which gives us 320 pounds of wheels, right? Now, let me ask you, how many pounds of complete car do we have over here? So I'm going to ask you, to pause the video and fill in that box right there. How many pounds of complete car do we have? Okay, let me suppose you paused it, and I'm going to write in here that you should have said 15, 20, right? Because it's 1,200 plus 320. Let me go to another piece of my paper here and say, just check this, confirm that, 1,200. Plus 320 is 02, and that's 1520. That's correct. So it's 1520 pounds of car. And can you see how we uh, the mass has been conserved? How many? How much do the objects weigh before the reaction? 1520. How many after? 1520. What happens to the mass in this reaction? It is conserved. Okay? It stays the same. All right.
So let's let's look, consider an example that's a little more uh, like something you might do in a lab or in, a or in, in theory. Suppose we've got sodium and chlorine, and we're putting them together to make sodium chloride. So let's consider first of all, I need my pen back. Let's consider first of all, if we have, let's consider the number up here, okay? So, so how many uh, purple spheres do we have here? I can't, it's one, two, three, four, five. Looks like it's five times five times five. Five times five is 25, so it looks like it's 125 balls there. Can you see that, 125 spheres? Okay. Oh, wait a second. No, this is a solid. Sorry. Let's go back here now. This is all one piece. How many pieces do we have here? There's only one, right? It's just one little block. Okay. How many pieces do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got ten, right? And how many pieces do we have here? I'm hoping you're answering that question. You should. When I ask a question like that, yeah, you should pause the video and think what it is because you, you'll get much, much more out of this if you can can stop and think. Okay. So how many pieces do I have here? If there's one piece here and ten pieces here, how many pieces do I have here? Let me put a box here to help jog your help jog you a little bit, jar you out of your um, um, your your um, sleep if you're if you're asleep right now. Pause it. Fill in that video, or fill in that box. Okay, let me suppose you paused it, and there's one piece there. Can you see it? All right, so there's one here. One plus 10 is equal to one, all right? If you're talking about pieces, that's exactly true. Of course, we're adding apples and oranges and such, so it's, that's why it doesn't make sense. But mass now, aha, here's grams and grams and grams. And this is the law of the conservation of mass. If I have seven plus seven grams of, of sodium, and then I'm gonna have seven plus seven, uh, seven, I'm sorry, I'm misspeaking, I'm afraid. If I have 7.7 .7 grams of sodium over here, I'm still going to have it over here after it's all reacted, right? It's all there. So I'm going to have 7.7 .7 in here too. And if I have 11.9 here, I'm going to have 11.9 grams of chlorine in here too. Get the both in there. So if they're both there, they're added together. Can you see that? So 11.9 uh, Seven point seven gives me six. Carry the one. Nineteen point six grams, and that's exactly what I have. Okay, and this is the law. How do you spell conservation? Right, S here. Ah, ugly. Conservation of mass. Well, I got a little boy here who wants to walk through the kitchen. What do you want? Go ahead, go ahead and do it. Just, just go ahead and do it. Just be real quiet. Okay, so the law, that's the law of the conservation of mass. All right, so the next uh, law that we want to, now we're introducing, is the law of definite proportions. All samples of a given compound, regardless of their source or how they were prepared, have the same proportions of their constituent elements. Well, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I guess I would say, that what that means is all samples of a given compound. So let's say, let's make up a given compound here. Given compound, let's say we use CO2 a lot. Let's say CO2. Okay, all samples of a given compound, um, regardless of the source or how they were prepared, have the same proportions. Okay, so let's say we've got some some fella It's kind of like me, doesn't it? Except he needs glasses. A couple lines in his face. Okay, so we got some fella, and he's blowing out carbon dioxide. Okay, and we have uh, another fella who's sitting in a car. Unfortunately, not quite. It's interesting. A picture. Let's say the car is blowing out carbon dioxide, all right? Well, in both scenarios, let me change colors here so we can keep our red. 
color and color black. Um, let's in both scenarios what we've got is we've got CO2, right? And so that means for every atom of carbon we've got two atoms of oxygen. Uh, all samples of a given compound, we're going to use CO2 as an example, regardless of their source, we could have a person and a car, have the same proportions of their constituent elements. And so that means that the number of carbon to the number of oxygen here is going to equal to the number of carbon to the number of oxygen here. Now, since these, I will say that the mass is going to, going to be the same. Um, because each one of these carbons weighs the same thing no matter what the source, each one of these oxygens weighs the same thing no matter the source. The mass of carbon over the mass of oxygen, this is how they figured it out, is going to equal to the mass of carbon from the car to the mass of oxygen. All right, so that's the law of definite proportions. All samples of the given compound, regardless of their source or how they were prepared, have the same proportions of their constituent elements. All right, now the next law is a little more, oh, you know, we're going to do, sorry, we're going to do an example here first. So the law of different proportions, two samples of carbon dioxide, all right, so let's say we got, you know, still working with a, looks like here it doesn't say uh, where they, they come from, it doesn't matter. Let's go back to, yeah, I'll stick, stick with black. Two samples are decomposed. I'm going to say sample A and sample B is here and here. Two samples of a given compound are decomposed into their constituent elements. One sample produces 25.6 grams of oxygen. So I'm going to say mass of oxygen. I'm going to let this be a table. Here's one column. Here's another column. And here's my first row, OK? The mass of oxygen is 25.6. This is going to be in grams. I don't have to keep writing grams out. And 9.6 grams of carbon mass of carbon, 9.6. We'll worry about sig figs later. Okay, and the uh, other produces 21.6 grams of oxygen and 8.1 grams of carbon. Show that these results are consistent with the law of definite proportions. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to think what I was thinking. What I was, I'm going to do what I did um, in the previous slide. I'm going to say, oh, okay, well, the mass of oxygen over the mass of carbon from this sample must equal the mass of oxygen from the mass of carbon over here, right? So the mass of oxygen over here is 25.6. The mass of carbon is 9.6. The mass of oxygen over here is 21.6. Mass of carbon is 8.1. So I'm going to get my calculator out and calculate these two. You should be doing the same thing. 25.6 divided by 9.6 is equal to 2.667. And 21.6 divided by, I know it's going to come to, I trust this, indeed, 2.667. Okay, so we have demonstrated that which was to have been demonstrating. Okay, so the next law is a, a little more complicated, and we're going to spend a little more time on it in a minute here. Okay, the law of multiple proportions. All right, the law of multiple proportions, this is really wordy. When two elements, A and B, form two different compounds, the masses of elements the masses of element B that combine with one gram of elements A, that's a misprint right there, can be expressed, one gram of element A can be expressed as a ratio of small whole numbers. All right, so this is a lot of, lot of, lot of words here. Let's look um, at a, an example. Carbon dioxide. All right, so uh, whenever I get something like this, and I recommend you do the same, I, I, I'm overwhelmed immediately. I'm going to pull that law back out. I'm going to actually flip to that in the page. Well, you don't have the book in front of you, maybe, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that here. When two elements A and B, right, this is just the law as it's defined in the textbook. When two elements A and B form two different compounds, the masses of element B that combine with one gram of here. 
element A can be expressed as a ratio of small whole numbers. All right, so in the context of this uh, example, what is element A? That's a good question, right? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to prove some stuff to myself. But element A, what is element A? Look at this. When two elements, element A, be formed two different compounds, the masses of element B that combine with one gram of element A, aha, there's my element A, right? Okay, so the mass of element A, it looks like in, in compound one, Okay, the mass of element A in compound 1, it looks like it's, well, it's 1, right? Agreed? 1 gram of A, if I'm going to try to map over this example to this definition, I'm going to use, I'm going to let A be carbon. Okay, it looks like it's 1 in, in that one as well. Uh, yeah, in compound 2, right? So we're going to call this compound 1 in this compound too, okay? So, what about the mass of B in compound one? It's 2.67. What about the mass of B in compound two? It's 1.33. Okay, now I'm ready to, to, to understand this definition, I think. When two elements, A and B, form two different compounds, the masses of element B that combine with, right, that combined with one gram of element A can be expressed as a ratio of small whole numbers. All right, so what that means, here's my one, here's my one uh, mass of element B, and here's the other mass of element B. All right, this is becoming more clear to me now. All right, now it looks like that those two numbers can be expressed as a ratio of small whole numbers. Aha, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to express this as a ratio, one point. Three, three. And in order to reduce this ratio, you guys know how to do that. What you need to do is you take you need to take the smallest of either of these numbers and divide both of them by it, right? So that this becomes 1.33. This is how to reduce ratios. You did this for the SAT. Okay? So the number on the bottom obviously becomes 1. 1.33 divided by 1.33 is 1. 2.67 divided by 1.33 is 2. Look at that. Do you agree that this is, aha, a ratio of small whole numbers? Aha, love it. Okay. So, indeed, this does uh, demonstrate or this is consistent with the law of multiple proportions. Okay, now let's look at a, a uh, another example. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, o I'm overwhelmed when I see a problem like this. First thing I do is panic. Second thing I do is I look up this uh, rule in the um, textbook, and I go, okay, yeah, here's the law of multiple proportions. All right, so nitrogen forms several compounds with oxygen, including nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen monoxide. Okay, Nitrogen dioxide contains... All right, so this is immediately... Uh, I'm confused again, like, as always, right? First thing you do is panic. Second thing, you look up the rule and you say, all right, I need to sort some things out. So I'm going to go with A and B again. And I'm going to figure out which is A and which is B. In the, oops, there's that thing again. I'm going to figure out which is A in the context of uh, this... Problem, aha, there's one gram of nitrogen, right? And there's one gram of nitrogen, so that's my A. And it looks like the other guy is going to have to be oxygen. Okay, compound one is, I'm going to say here, compound two is here. Okay, so how much nitrogen is in compound one? Nitrogen dioxide contains 
2.28 grams of oxygen to every one gram. Oh, so it's one, as I expected, I guess. Should have expected. While dinitrogen monoxide contains 0.57 grams of oxygen to every one gram. Aha, okay, to one gram of nit nitrogen. Okay, now let's go back to how much oxygen is in compound one. Nitrogen contains, aha, 2.28. And uh, dinitrogen monoxide, which is the other compound, compound two, contains 0 0.57. Okay, excellent. Now, I want to show that these results are consistent with the law of multiple proportions. So I'm going to take these two, right, because the masses of element B, and they're here. Here's one mass of element B, and here's the other mass of element B, uh, can be expressed as a ratio of small whole numbers. All right, so here I go. 2.28 divided by 0 0.570. And... The way that I reduce this is I take the smallest of these two numbers and I divide both of them by it, right? It looks like they're both going to be divided by 0.57. So the bottom, of course, obviously goes to 1 because it's 0.57. And the top, I'm going to do that with my calculator. Probably some of you can do that in your head. I cannot. 0.57 equals 4. I guess I should have. I don't know. I guess I can see that. I don't know. 4. This, again, I'm going to uh, use my favorite word, aha, a ratio of small whole numbers, all right, QED. We have now demonstrated that which was to have been demonstrated, okay, show that these results are consistent with the law of multiple proportions. And then one final circle or my next favorite word, QED. All right, congratulations. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do now for section 2.2 is we're going to consider John Dalton's uh, at uh, atomic theory. And we're going to go back and, and add some beef to it. Each element is composed of tiny indestructible particles called atoms. That's what we did in a previous uh, section. Each element, number one, is composed of tiny indestructible particles called atoms. Number two, all atoms of a given element have the same mass and other properties that distinguish them from atoms of other elements. In other words, the atoms are all identical. Number three, atoms combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. Okay. Look at that. And four, atoms of one element cannot change into atoms of another element. In a chemical reaction, atoms change in a way that they are bound together with other atoms to form new substances. Okay, so these are the four uh, rules of Dalton's atomic theory, which he suggested as early, can you believe it, as the, the early 1800s. Okay, hope that's helpful.